Uh, Teddy talked a lot yesterday about getting off to a faster start. And I think yeah. you said that you said uh, it wasn't until maybe the 34th play that you guys were yeah. in a rhythm. What can maybe you guys do to, to get off to that faster start? I know the Alberto fumble maybe changes a few things, but what can you guys do? Yeah, I mean, I thought we were moving the ball. Um, you know, fortunately, we had a couple fourth downs we were able to, to convert to keep drives alive. You know, I think it was just some of the first game stuff. You know, it was, um, you know, a guy here, a guy there. Um, maybe I didn't put him in the right position, whatever. Um, just things. But I think, I think I've said it here. I've said it in this setting at least a couple of times. Uh, the way to really win on a consistent basis to get ahead early. You know, we got to be aggressive and we got to be greedy with points early and, and do what we can to score. Um, but it took us till the last play of the first half to get ahead. You know, and people, you know, you forget that. And so when we're back here on Monday uh, correcting what happened, talking about the good, correcting the bad, you know, inside the numbers, that's, that's what we're looking at. And so then you back out, you know, from that 34th play or whatever it was, you know, we had a scoring opportunity that we, we didn't take advantage of. That's, that's huge. And it's hard to score in this league against good defenses, and the Giants were a good defense. Um, we're going to face the same, same type of situation this week. They're tough to score against, so we're going to have to, we're going to have to be on it. And we got to, we got to get rid of those those little mistakes. Now Teddy made plays, and guys battled, and you know there's a lot of really good things that happened. But uh, we got to be more on point, I think, early on, and that'll help us get in the end zone uh, earlier. Were you surprised at all at Teddy's mobility if you had him earlier in his career? And also, how much did it help the confidence of the offense when you're going for it on fourth down? Coach, head coach is saying, yeah. let's go. Yeah, I, didn't, I wasn't surprised by anything Teddy did. I'm, again, I've got history with Teddy, so I, I, know, I know what he brings to the game. And there were a couple times there where um, you know, a play started to play out and not quite the way we had recognized, and he made a play. You know, and that's part of Teddy's charm, you know, is he can make a play. Um, so, and then going forward on fourth down three times. Yeah. What does that do for an offense's confidence when a coach does that? Thing? Well, I love it. So just mark me down for yeah, let's do it. Um, I think that's I think that's an important piece. And and really the way it plays out in the game, you know, coach just says, hey, we're going for it. So my concern is, okay, it's fourth and whatever. What play do I want to call for us? And you know, I think um, I think it's good. I think um, you know it's it's strategic to go go for it. You know, and there's certain times when you don't, and there's certain times that you do. And my responsibility is to make sure when, when the boss wants to go for it, you know, do our very, very best to put the players in the best position to, to you know, make it work. Hey, how does that uh, logistically uh, work? Um, to, uh, to, uh, We're going for it. Just <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> you guys, you guys want to make it sound like it's something – you know, there's nobody looking at any charts or anything. The boss just says, Pat, we're going for it. I said, great, let's do this. He, uh, he joked that he heard crickets <laughs> on the one on the yeah. 49. Were, were you like, all right. Well, I, my role is to pick a play that we're going to run. So I told him, just mark me down as yes. So don't, <laughs> you know. But do you, you have any influence to say, hey, coach, you want to go for it? I've got something really good here. No, I think we just, you know, as you see the flow of the game and, and you know, let's say we're in a third and four situation and we're on the plus side of the field, I'm already prepared for him to say, yeah, go for it, you know. If we were backed up on our own five, it was third and 12 and we didn't make it, I wouldn't be so expecting it, you know. So you sort of, and having been in coach's chair, you know, you get used to, okay, when this – you know, what to expect. And, you know, and it doesn't always happen that way, but at least in my mind, once we hit the third down, I'm always sort of thinking of the next one. But that's what I was going to ask is, how different is it sitting in that chair versus the call the play? Yeah, I don't know. I used, I didn't, you know, when I was the head coach, I didn't ask anybody. I just said, we're going for it, you know, and then crickets or not, we went for it, you know. Uh, Joe, uh, Joe Collin calling that Jacksonville defense been in Baltimore for a long time. Do you see some similarities, and what are some of those? Yeah, I think that's uh, – I, I heard a little bit of Coach's answer with regard to not a lot of evidence on the team you're going to play. And so we certainly have to go back and watch what he did in in Baltimore. And there, there are some, some clues. I mean, there's a lot of similarities to how they just line up. Um, but how you line up and then actually what you do 
can change greatly. Um, you know, he may have been more of a fan of pressure than what we saw, or he may have been more of a fan of um, playing conservative in the back end. What we've seen to this point, though, is that they're a very fast defense. They're very talented. Um, they got big, long corners that are very physical, and you know they'll they'll crawl up on you now and challenge you in man coverage situations. So, the game from you know thirty thousand feet, you know how we attack them may be a little bit different than how we attacked the Giants, who you know, would throw a shell over things and pick their spots. These guys will come up and challenge you quite a bit both in the front and in the coverage, um, and play probably a lot more man. Just even even with a small sample size, that's sort of what we're expecting. Coach, Teddy, uh, and, the pass, Teddy and, and dealing with the pass rush and dealing with the pressure and escaping it, and also, like you said, the improv stuff, how much of that is stuff, stuff, stuff that you can coach into him, and how much of that is that just natural feel for that? I think there's an innate ability to do that. and. You know, this is a this is a three dimensional. It's oblique. I mean, there, there's a lot of ways to see things and make things happen. And then, you know, some guys just have a, a feel for when things are breaking down. You know, Teddy's not the fastest guy on the planet, but he sure can be elusive. And he knows when to get down, and he knows how to get yardage. Um, the way he maneuvers the pocket gives him the best chance to keep a drive. You know, keep a play alive. Um, and so it's natural. A lot of it's been trained. But when you train it over a certain, you know, over many, many years, then it becomes somewhat innate. And I think he's got that ability. Javante and Melvin had almost identical carries. Is that essentially what you wanted to do? Or did that just kind of organically work out? Uh, I like that word, organically. It just sort of works out that way. Um, and they both had an impact on the game. Um, they, were, they were really, I mean, this thing will play out for the Giants, but they're really stout and physical up front, and that was quite a battle. And so we just had to keep picking away at them in the run game. I think it's important to do for our football team, and our guys had some really good runs. Um, and we're going to use both backs. I can't tell you it's going to end up being even every week, but I think they're both going to have to have an impact. Um, and then, you know, hopefully over the course of the year, um, they both have enough carries where we're saying, boy, they both had great years. Your ability, for a couple more games. your ability to stay patient with the run game, do you think that contributed to Melvin's big run that you were able to kind of put, you know, jab out of the long time? Yeah, I mean, that, that came at the time of the game where, you know, we were up by a couple scores. And so let's, let's you know, let's crank at him here a little bit and use the clock and whatever. And then he was able to really make, really kind of put the game away with that, with that play. Um, now, I believe in the run game, and I believe in multiple types of run schemes. Um, you know, and we, we game plan it, and, and we do it in a way where it's going to make sense, you know, against the team that we're playing. We game plan the run just like we do the pass, you know, and we carry into the game a lot of different run concepts, just like we have a lot of different pass concepts. And um, a lot of times after the game, it may play out a little different than we planned, so we get to certain things that we may not have thought we'd get to if we're ahead or behind or whatever. And that's why we want to try to control games by getting ahead early, and that, that plays back to the first point that we were discussing. Uh, we got to get greedy early, and we got to get on the board early, and I think that should be really the message for our team moving forward. Last two, Ryan and Mike. Hey, Pat, no Jerry for a couple of weeks now. Yeah. How comfortable are you calling those same kind of routes for TJ and Pat, uh, Tim Patrick? Yeah, I mean, maybe I'm um, a little different than most, but we have a scheme, you know, and we're going to put KJ in there and Tim. And, you know, you saw we, we got the ball spread around the other night, and I think that's the best way to play. Um, we have plays that are strategic for certain guys. Jerry's an unbelievable route runner, you know, and we're going to miss him until he's back. But the other guys are really fine players, you know, and they're just going to slide up and roll. And I think that's the way we got to approach it. Glasgow's uh, last play was on Melvin's uh, yeah. touchdown run, and he really sealed off the nose tackle. Did you know he was struggling a little before then, or was it a sudden thing that you didn't know about? We, I, I became more aware of his situation. Um, after the game, you know, and then we were we were delayed, obviously leaving, and I, I so I called him and texted him, and you know we we're uh, 
what he did was very, based on what we had heard was going on with him physically, what he did the other night was super heroic. I mean, uh, he battled through it. Um, I guess in the moment we didn't know, you know, how big of an issue it, it was for him, but he's a tough sucker and um, until he's back, we're going to miss him, you know, and we, know, we don't know when that'll be, but um, we're sure glad he's okay. And we just want to make sure he's right before we put him back out there because what he did was super heroic, and I think that our team can learn from that. Pat, uh, how much did you follow Urban Meyer's rise as a college coach, and what do you think about his prospects in Jacksonville? Yeah, he's just been a really strong coach, you know, over the years. He's always gotten teams turned around, and they win a lot. Um, and now he's in pro football, so that's game to game, and we're just focused on his team. Ed, uh, Vic mentioned Caleb Stearns and, and uh, Mc, uh, Josh as uh, candidates to play in the dime. How does Caleb learn that position since the start of training camp? Caleb Stearns. Caden. Caden Stearns. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, we have we have a variety of guys that play different roles. You know, Nate will be in there. Caden will be in there. Both of them. Um, but they've done a good job, and we expose them to that in camp. You know, one of the strong things is the way uh, George built. You know, our secondary in the off season is is we have a lot of guys. So when when a guy needs a rest or a guy's down for a week, we got guys that can fill in. Got plenty of corners. So you know, I think we're in good shape. What are you looking for most out of Pat as he makes his uh, starting debut um, in uh, Ronald's place on Saturday? Yeah, just everything about Pat is his process. You know, and he has such a great process and his preparation and very serious and and listens, and he, he learns with every experience that comes his way. So it's really all about his process, and that'll lead to good things. Talk about learning about his mistakes. So did you, did you see him react well kind of to the, the 37-yard touchdown um, and, and just sort of how he saw it on film afterwards? Yeah, and that's a team play. And uh, sure, he was there, and he, he wants to make that tackle next time. But uh, yeah, he, he was very controlled and calm and, and uh, didn't miss a beat. Uh, Draymond Jones was very active in the run game, stopping the Giants last week. How far has he come in that area since you drafted him? Uh, you know, he, he's, he's just improved, you know, and we talked about it. You know, th those guys get better in our D-line room. And, uh, you know, his power, his strength, his knowledge of schemes, all those things together. You know, he's a third-year player, and he's, he's, he's just improved. I know you didn't have as many takeaways as you'd like, but when you hold a team in check, you know what you did for the – the whole game, would that make it a little easier to deal with? Sure, and you know, in the fourth down stops, those are like takeaways. Um, but the one we did get was at a, a big time. It really mattered. The game was, you know, in balance, and our offense went took the ball down the field. So uh, we're looking for more, and we want to improve on that. You know, so we were happy with the win. We can always improve. What stands out about Trevor? What stands out about Trevor Lawrence after our first game? You know, you just know that this guy has the capacity to be very good, and he's going to be good. And we we want to try to do everything we can to win this game at this time against him. Uh, Vic was saying sometimes when you blitz a young guy, you're actually helping him identify. What yeah, sometimes. Can you, respond? you know, um, yeah, sometimes you clear up the picture for him, and uh, you know, he just he's going to get a you know a multiple game plan from us. That's no real secret. So uh, you don't want to give anybody any one thing. Looking back on that, um, after Albert O fumbled, <clears throat> they're backed up at, on their four-yard line. You had a three and out, which was a mm -hmm. real big, pivotal series. What, what is, how difficult is it when they got the whole field behind you, but yet you got, you know, you got them backed up on the goal line? You kind of got both things yeah. going there. Yeah, fair, fair question. You know, you want to smother them there, but you don't want to give them everything. Uh, it's something we work on, and we try to, you know, make sure we guard against the big plays to start. You know, and and you you mentioned, you know, that that uh, the, the uh, turnover happened there. You know, Vic talks about, you know, challenging the momentum when it could spin in a game and how strong can either side of the ball you know and that's an emphasis that we do as a team so if we're struggling on d we're looking for the o to pick us up you know and answer any anything bad that would happen to us on defense robinson and the jaguars running backs what do you notice about them on the film and keys containing those two guys? yeah they're good tough runners you know and, and, and their system built on a good run game you know the the both you know uh daryl bevel and and uh, uh, Brian Schottenheimer, you know, they believe in run. 
you know, you know, they're going to have balance in their attacks. They're very good coaches. They're, you know, they have balanced schemes, and they give you a lot of tough things to deal with. So uh, that run game's number one, and they're good, tough runners, and they get north and south. Coach, you guys are lucky to have a big lead. You had the game wrapped up, and some of your starters on defense sat out. Justin Simmons didn't. I am curious how you view his consecutive snap streak. Do you view it as important or? Not, not really. Not really. Um, I wasn't totally aware of the consecutive that of that. You know, I know he's been in all the games, but no. Forty-nine games every snap. Really? Didn't know that. Right. Okay. <laughs> that, that, that. That whole thing is above my pay grade. Yeah, so. Right to end is Kyle Ripken's streak over here. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Thank so, you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.